One thing I find really amazing in gardening is that we plant trees and shrubs all over the place. Gardeners do it, the municipality, the city, the province, everybody's planting trees. And yet very few people know how to plant the trees correctly. I can tell you for sure our city has no clue how to plant trees. They keep doing it wrong and they'd rather do it wrong and replace lots of them than do it right. Because doing it right does take a little bit of extra effort. In this video, I'm going to show you how to plant trees. Before we get into that, we have to talk about the way we purchase trees or get trees. And I think there are three different options here. Sometimes you buy a tree in a pot, and it's actually growing in that pot, right? There's a tree, there's soil, or soil is mixed in most cases, and a pot. The other option is a B and B. These are trees that have been grown in the field for a number of years. They're dug up, they're covered in burlap, and then they add some strings and wires and so on. And then you buy the tree that way. That's a B and B tree. Now there is a third option, which is a kind of a hybrid of the two. I've bought some trees in pots and found out that they took the B and B tree and put it in a pot covered with a little bit of soil. Nursery should not be doing that unless they clearly mark the tree that they've done that. And I'll explain why in a second. The third option is a tree that you're transplanting. So it was in one location in your property and you're moving it to another location. Now the planting of these is pretty similar, but we treat the initial steps a little different. Let's first compare the B and B and potted plants. Well, a tree that's been grown in the pot has a complete root system. It developed in this pot. This happens to be one of my seedlings. So I know the roots that it grew are all in this pot. The problem with a B and B tree is that they've grown in the field. And so the root system is this big. They've come and they cut almost all the roots off and you get this tiny little bit of old root around the stem they wrap that and that's what you buy now that sounds terrible and it sounds like that tree won't survive but those trees are actually pretty good provided you get them soon after they were dug and you plant them right away and you pretty much have to do that either in spring or fall but what happens at a nursery is that if those trees don't sell, they tend to stick them into a pot, cover them with a bit of soil to hide the fact that they're B&B, &B, and then sell them to the unsuspecting customer. And it's happened to me a couple times. Now what I do when I buy a tree at a nursery, I pull it out of the pot and I dig down and make sure it's not a B&B. &B. I don't want a B&B &B tree to plant in the summertime. Now a potted tree like this can be purchased any time of the year and plant it because you're going to do minimal root damage here and so it will survive a b and b only in spring and fall now if you're transplanting a tree it's best to do that in spring or fall because when you transplant you're still going to do a lot of root damage so it's better to do that in off seasons when the tree doesn't have a lot of leaves to support now, a lot of people say you should do this in fall, and fall is a great time to plant trees. I don't think that's true in colder climates. In colder climates, they work much better if you plant them in spring. And the reason is that trees grow most of their roots in the warm months of the year. The idea that trees grow a lot of roots in the fall and towards Christmas is a myth, at least in cold climates. Trees grow roots in warmer soil. Before we actually go and plant one of these, we want to do some prep work for this tree. A day before you're planting, it's a really good idea to water these well. That will allow the tree to pull up a lot of water into the system. And it's going to need that to survive the transplanting. No matter how careful you are, you do some root damage. And when you do root damage, you reduce the plant's ability to absorb water. So we want to start with a fully hydrated tree. So now it's day of planting. A pot of tree, we just take it out of the pot and we can go ahead and plant it. That's not an issue. For a B&B &B tree, you should take all of the burlap, the strings, and the wire off. Now a lot of nurseries will tell you you don't have to do that. They're wrong. Some people just roll the burlap down a bit and plant. That's also not a good idea. 
There are lots of examples of older trees where the wire basket has been left on and now the tree roots have gone through the holes and they get bigger and bigger over years and at some point they get strangled and the root dies. Take it all off. Don't worry about doing a little bit of damage to that root system. Now if you're transplanting, it's not an issue. You just take it from one spot, move it to the new spot and away you go. The next question that comes up is, should you root wash? Now, there are some people that promote this idea of washing all the soil off the roots and doing a lot of root repair. That works in some climates. So in climates where there's a lot of rain and the soil stays moist and temperature pretty average, that may work. But there's very little scientific evidence that shows that that is a better way to plant trees. In cold climate, we find that if you wash all that soil off, you do too much damage and the tree may not survive. This is particularly true of deciduous conifers. It's best not to root wash the tree unless you suspect a serious problem. For the average gardener, get that burlap off, get the wire off, and then just plant it as is. The next thing to do is to look at the root system. As I said, this is one of my seedlings, and it hasn't been in this pot for too long. The root system looks pretty good. You don't see a lot of circulating roots. You see a few surface roots, that's good. You can plant this the way it is. Now, if you see a lot of circulating roots out here, that means it's been in the pot far too long, and that is quite common for trees that are grown at nurseries. If they don't sell, they just keep trying to sell them. And sometimes they've been in that pot for a couple years. Now they have a terrible root system. What you should do with a root system like that is take a knife and just score it four places from top to bottom, about a half inch deep. You want to cut those surface roots and wherever you make a cut, that root will start to grow and it'll grow out into your native soil. And that's what we really want. Let's get to some real planting. Figure out where you want the tree and then dig a hole. But how deep should you make this hole? This is one of the most important things for planting a tree. You don't want the hole too deep. And of course, you don't want it too shallow either. So how deep should this hole be? Well, in order to figure that out, you have to understand root flares. If you look at a tree, the trunk goes straight down and then it flares out at the top of the highest roots. That's the root flare. When you're finished planting this tree, we want the root flare to be at the soil level or even a little bit above the soil level. You don't want the root flare buried in the soil. Have a look at your tree and figure out how deep you need it and start digging a hole. You want the soil in the bottom of the hole undisturbed. So don't dig too deep. It's better to dig a shallow hole test it, and then dig a little deeper. If you do dig too deep, put some soil back and pack it down with your foot. You want the tree roots sitting on solid soil. If you don't do that, then the tree will settle and sink over time. And now your root flare is too deep. What about the width of this hole? How wide does it need to be? I tend to dig my holes just a little bit bigger than the root ball, but you can dig them a little wider than that. A lot of people slope the sides so that the circumference at the top of the soil is larger than the circumference near the bottom. But to be quite honest with you, I don't really bother with that. The tree's got to be able to grow in your native soil, and the sooner the roots get used to your soil, the better. Now that you've got your hole dug, take the tree and put it in the hole and check the height again. Use your hand or a board if you want. You want to make sure that that flare is in the right spot. Once the hole is dug, it's time to backfill that soil. A lot of people recommend adding all kinds of amendments in here to make that soil better, but that's not what you should do. The soil that you dug out of the hole, that's the soil that goes back into the hole. No peat moss, no compost, no manure, no fertilizer. This tree does not need to be fertilized right now. Put the same soil back in and then check to see that the tree is vertical. 
look at it from all different angles to make sure that trunk is good and vertical. If it's not, straighten it out. What I do next is pack down that loose soil a bit. And I use my foot for that. But as I'm doing that, I'm not putting a lot of weight on that foot. Most of my weight is on the foot outside of the hole. I'm just packing it down gently. You could use your hands for that too, but I find the foot works a lot better. Your tree's now planted. It's vertical. The soil's been put back, and we're ready to do some watering. In your backyard, the trunk of the tree probably doesn't need to be protected, at least at this time of the year. The problem is in winter. In winter, there's very little for rodents and animals to eat, and so they tend to eat the bark off young trees. It's a good idea to put a wrap on, and the one in the picture works really well and is easy to put on and make sure that's put on before winter. That will stop mice and rabbit damage or even deer damage if they're in your area. You've got the tree planted, now what? How do you take care of this tree? Immediately after planting, give it a really good soak. Put the hose on it, let the water dribble out, and let it run for a long time. You want that whole root ball and the surrounding soil really good and wet. Then you mulch, and when you mulch, you want two to three inches of mulch, and the mulch should never touch the trunk of the tree. You don't want to make one of these mulch volcanoes. That's not good for trees. Keep the mulch level and keep it away from the trunk of the tree. That mulch will keep the roots cooler and hold moisture in the soil. What about staking the tree? Almost no trees need to be staked. If you're putting them on the front boulevard where people might come by and knock them over, stake them a little bit. In your backyard, they don't need staking. If you do stake them, use one stake and keep it fairly loose. You want this tree to wiggle in the wind. The purpose of staking is only to keep it from falling over. It's not to hold it steady. If you do stake, take that stake off within one year or even sooner. By then, the root system will have established and the tree can stay upright. What about pruning? You've just planted this tree. Should you prune the top? Well, many years ago, it was common sense to everyone that if you do some root damage down here, you need to reduce the size of the top area. So people were pruning the top, shortening the stem, taking branches off, and so on. That's no longer the thinking, and... Science has shown that that's not really good for the tree. All these branches up here have lots of nutrients inside of them. By cutting them, we remove those nutrients, and the plant needs those to grow. So the best thing to do is to do no pruning. Now, if you broke a branch, prune that off right away. If there's any dead sections, you can prune those off. But everything else, just leave it. The tree knows what it's doing. If it can't support all of the leaves up here, it will drop some of them, and that's okay. If you see your tree lose some leaves, they go yellow and brown and fall off, that's okay. The tree is taking care of itself. It's saying, I need to grow roots. I can't support all these leaves. I'm going to drop some of them. The tree's quite able to make more leaves later in summer, so that's not an issue. Let the tree handle that. You shouldn't prune that off to try and help the tree. Your tree's planted. The only thing left to do is to make sure it doesn't dry out. And watering is one of the most difficult things for gardeners to learn. So I've made a video that shows you how to water both newly transplanted things and everything else in your garden. Learn to water correctly by watching this video here. Happy garden.